So I'm having a chat with John and Mike of G4. How are you? Very Hello. well. Thanks for having us on. Good. Great stuff. So the big news is you've just released a brand new record, which is out now. For those who have yet to hear the record, tell us a little bit about it. Well, it's got a huge variety of songs on it, for starters. We've got everything from opera to a bit of rock, a bit of classic, a bit of barbershop, and a real emotional roller coaster. actually. We've got some real tearjerkers. We've got a cover of James Blunt's Monsters on there, um, and also some very uplifting songs as well. And we go right back to our roots with Goodnight Sweetheart. So when we were at the Music College, Guildhall School of Music and Drama, we were a barbershop quartet, um, and it really takes us all the way back to them which is over 20 years ago now which is a bit scary so something for everyone yeah absolutely and uh, we've been playing a track of yours you don't have to say you love me tell us a little bit about the reason behind doing that track so uh, the Italian as well, which we've uh, amalgamated in the Io Che Non Vivo Senza Te is uh, a glorious um, I'm trying to think when it would have been recorded by Donaggio it was a uh, back in the 50s and 60s, yeah. I guess. And it's uh, originally been performed in Italian and obviously Justy Springfield made it very, very famous with the English version and various other covers and versions since. So we've kind of amalgamated the two and it became the first single from the album, the 20th anniversary album. And it's, uh, it's just a really gorgeous tune and melody and the fact that we've then got the two languages that actually run consecutively in the final chorus is uh it's quite exciting to hear the interplay between the um the lyrics it's it kind of just makes it really interesting to the ear yeah absolutely and you've got a couple of new members who are appearing for the first time on this record what was it like working with them well, Duncan's been with us about five or six years. Um, he's our bass and he speaks very low and sings very low as well. Um, but our very exciting new addition is Jai McDowell, who won Britain's Got Talent um, as a solo artist. And he's new to the fold to celebrate our 20th anniversary. And his voice is insane. And uh, he brings a whole different sort of um, attitude, really, to the album. Um, and it's just really exciting to see how his voice really blends with us together in the harmonies. And then also he can take it up stratospherically high and impactful um, in a very sort of pop sensitive way. Because obviously we're known as being a classical crossover group. Um, so we're not purely operatic, but he comes more from a sort of a, a pop and musical theatre kind of vibe. So it's really exciting to have that mix because it really works with all the different styles that we perform. Yeah, most definitely. Now, when you come to decide what tracks make it onto a record, what's the process? How do how do things start off with with choosing? It's very difficult. I mean, we're known and we've uh, stuck to our tradition of doing covers. Uh, it's it's something that we've just become. I guess we've been given the license for it ever since we did Bohemian Rhapsody and we took on possibly the, the most untouchable song in the world and people enjoyed it and embraced it and, and realized that it was great to put a new spin on a song. Um, and when we met Brian May, it was wonderful to have his support and endorsement from Queen himself. So uh, we've continued that narrative and it's very difficult because we're so blessed with the opportunity to sing in a huge variety of different styles and genres and take on things that would potentially be considered untouchable. So we make huge lists, huge playlists. Uh, we spend many hours driving around with the tour shows and uh, and rehearsals and different things we do with, with work. And we just play them. And um, we have different ideas and then things come into the mix from something on social media or someone else's advice or influence. And then it gets whittled down, whittled down, with a bit of a fight over which songs end up getting into the final, maybe 20, 30 and then eventually you end up with a list that you think, yeah, do you know what? We're proud of that. And uh, that's that's where it then stems from. But it's it's a hard process for sure. Mm. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, now, a question I love to ask bands and artists who do covers is you must have tried so many tracks to see if they work for you. Can you name some for us now that have simply not worked for you? One that we got really excited about was Don't Want to Miss a Thing, Aerosmith. Say the same thing. And it's something that we've tried on a number of albums because we thought, how can we not make this work? It would be ideal. And we've just tried it. And each time there's just something about it that just doesn't work. Um, and of course, the original is so iconic. And that vocal he does is insane. Mm -hmm. And you can't better it. And I think that's always the key with us is we're never trying to better a song because you can't. We are choosing such iconic songs, but it's doing something different that you hear a different viewpoint, a different angle with it. Um, and sadly, we weren't able to do that with that song. But who knows, on the next album, we might try it again because it always comes up. We're like, how can we not make it work? 
Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. And uh, you've now started your nice long tour. How have the first few dates been for you? Do you know it's been incredible? We've been uh, been out for a few weeks already, and we've got I think 72 of this theatre tour to uh, tackle this year, and then the Christmas tour. So 110 days this year, which is bonkers. Um, almost regretting it already. No, we're not. We're, we're thrilled. <laughs> Do you know what? It's a momentous occasion. 20 years, and to still be able to to come and and pack out houses and and share our music live is is genuinely what we love the most. It's exhausting. It's tiring, but it's so exhilarating and we're having the best time. Uh, but ask us maybe in January, once we've got all these dates out of the way to see how, how we felt about the, uh, the mammoth challenge ahead of us. But, you know, do you know what? It's, it's been great fun already and we're looking forward to all the other dates that we've got in store. Yeah, and you mentioned it, 20 years now of, of doing this. How have you created your set list? Well, again, that's quite a process, like choosing for an album. But um, because we got the new album, we wanted to include the tracks from there. So that was a very good starting point. And there are certain songs from our past, certainly from when we were on The X Factor, that we can't avoid. We can't miss them. And we love performing. So they had to be part of it. And then it's just a case of actually blending them together, because actually through that process, you discover how our sound has evolved. It still is very much a G4 sound and a unique thing but the sound has evolved and it's interesting to see how we can sort of amalgamate the two together. And that's always very exciting. But what we love with the tour is the fact that we can go from something that is so heartbreaking and so tear jerking, people got their tissues out. And the next minute we are being silly. We're taking the mick out of each other. Um, we might be singing some opera and waving some hankies in time with the beat and everyone's clapping along and there's such variety and I think that's what we love not only as singers and the, the challenge of it to sing in different styles but it really does take you on an incredible roller coaster journey throughout the show yeah and you mentioned X Factor there as well what what was the process of going from next to nobody's really to being on a show like that and and putting you in the position where you are today it was the most transformative moment in all of our lives. I saw the advert for The X Factor, Simon Cowell narrating it, saying for the first time ever, we're inviting groups to audition for a reality TV show of that kind. It was the very first um, series and episode of X Factor that we were then in. And it was just an unbelievable whirlwind ride. I mean, um, <laughs> the thing that just blew our minds was just how many people were watching it and you couldn't comprehend it. Back then there was no social media um i think we'd got sort of yahoo chat and i think that was as uh, embracing as it got with people and my space was sort of around but it's definitely less immediate the interaction that you get from an audience and you just see these figures each day or each week saying how many people are watching but you can't get your head around that it's uh, it's completely incomprehensible and it was life-changing uh, both professionally but also just privately in your life, you you couldn't just go out. And um, I guess for me being the blonde guy and having uh, the peroxide hair, especially uh, definitely caught people's attention. So the caps all got bought. I've still got hundreds of them and uh, the sunglasses and you, you worked out that that was your way you could get out and about. And, and it was quite odd. Um, that fame side was, was something that was a bit of a, a shock, uh, but it was, gosh, it was exciting. You could jump queues to nightclubs. You could get straight to the bar and the VIP areas. And gosh, we enjoyed it. Don't get me wrong, but it was certainly a shock to the system at the same time. Yeah, I can imagine. And uh, a question I do like to ask previous X Factor contestants like yourself is, are you still in touch with anybody from the series? Well, funny you should say that because, of course, our mentor and manager on the show, Louis Walsh, was recently on Celebrity Big Brother. So we were cheering him on with that. And he's always been great, actually. He's been such a support to us. And his real strength with us is choosing songs that people would just think, no way, they're not going to do that one. And it just really works. Um, an early one for us was Radiohead's Creep. And that's become one of the most popular, you know, for many people, it's their favourite song that we do. Um, and so he's very much um, been part of our, our journey, really. Um, and again, with this new album, we... We messaged him and said, you know, have you got any good song ideas? And he came forward with some. And it's it's always great to have that and that that connection in history to that. Um, and of course, Sharon Osbourne was also on our X Factor. She was on Celebrity Big Brother as well. And uh, she was always incredibly supportive. And we were reminiscing, actually, when we were on the X Factor and how she just invited us into her dressing room and Ozzy would be there and obviously um, their kids. And it was just very normal to hang around them. And they... Um, they were just the loveliest, really most down to earth people you could meet, which sounds ironic because I, I mean, I never watched all the Osborne shows and the craziness that people see, but they were just so 
kind and uh, we ended up singing at Kelly Osborne's 21st birthday and they really brought us into the fold and were, were so supportive and that was incredibly special because we were literally thrown into this catapulted into this incredible emotional roller coaster and to have someone in the industry that had been around for a number of years even at that stage was very humbling yeah for sure guys it's been a pleasure having a chat with you thanks very much for having thank us you on.